Hi, everyone. This would have been a live Morning Bites presentation, but because we are all um, participating in extreme social distancing and because um, Illinois has a shelter in place order and the university um, is empty, I'm doing this from my home computer. It's less than ideal circumstances. And in fact, now that I have started recording, the neighbor's dog is outside and it likes to um, cry a lot. Uh, so you'll hear a whining dog in the background and that belongs to my neighbor. Um, and there's not much I can do to uh, stop that other than to close the window and hope that it's not too much of a bother. But this uh, presentation won't take very long. This is a follow-up from an earlier presentation I gave that you can also find on the IRIS webpage. Um, I'll share that page with you in a moment on um, using Google Maps and creating your own, creating and designing your own maps using Google, uh, Google Maps interface. So uh, what I wanna do is go uh, right to the um, Google Maps page and get started with this um, follow-up. So let me share my screen. Um, let's see, Google Chrome, my, okay. So when I gave uh, my presentation last time, I gave a basic introduction to Google Maps on how to locate places, drop pins, and customize those pins according to various types of information, as well as how to bring in um, web pages, audio, um, video, and still images. Uh, this presentation is about how to bring in larger amounts of data through Google Maps um, import feature. So um, here I am on my Maps uh, account. So you need a, a, a Gmail or a Google account, and they're free. And when you sign up, you have the ability to go to my Maps. Uh, so um, google.com backslash maps, and it will bring you to your own Google Maps uh, account. Um, so keep in mind that you're not changing Google Maps in the universal sense. You're basically just making um, customized changes to, um, to your own map. So you're adding your own layer of information that only you can see unless you share that map. Uh, I also discussed this in the first presentation. So please go back and check out that video uh, for more information on all of that. So what I'm going to do today is create a new map and then import two layers of data that I encoded into an Excel spreadsheet originally. Um, so um, I also have an accompanying handout that I'll make sure that you can get a hold of if you want, with, which has a few more kind of step-by-step -step processes on, um, on how to do this process and how to, to create these layers. So I'm gonna create a, a, a brand new map And I want to give my untitled map a name. Um, so the name that I have uh, decided to give, kind of keeping with the times, is services during COVID-19. So I'm kind of interested in mapping maybe uh, some restaurants and some supermarkets that uh, people might want to have access to. So services during COVID-19. And I could add some information description about this map if I want to. So here are some restaurants and supermarkets uh, that are still open uh, during um, shelter in place orders. Okay, so that's the name of this map. But right now, it's just a blank map of the United States. So I want to import um, my first layer. So let's call this layer um, uh, restaurants. OK. And in a, um, a separate, a, a separate um, Microsoft Excel um, sheet, sorry, I had um, entered some data. Uh, in particular, I had entered um, the name of the restaurants, the latitude, the longitude, um, whether or not the restaurant was open. So one of these I have as closed because it just recently closed. It stopped, uh, it's just shutting down for a while. Um, and then the phone number for the restaurant and the web page where people can go to place orders 
uh, because these are all um, offering either takeout or curbside delivery. So I've already created that um, spreadsheet and I saved it as a .csv comma separated value uh, because that is what Google uh, Maps likes to upload. Um, you can upload um, Excel, I guess now it used to not like that. Um, uh, so um, one, one, I should note that one drawback, um, if you have something in Excel and convert it to .csv, sometimes there are missing, there are mystery kind of um, 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 spaces that can kind of mess up the presentation or, or the loading of the data. So if your data doesn't load correctly, if your data set doesn't load correctly, open open your file up as a, in like a program like text edit and you can clear out some of the mystery spaces and then try to reload your layer and it should load uh, fine. Um, so I'm loading um, the restaurant list here. And uh, what it wants to do is figure out where to locate the points. So it's going to try to identify what it thinks are the latitude and the longitude coordinates. So it has found them. Um, and then I'm going to display the um, uh, or, or title the place marks by the name of the restaurants. So once I finish that, it takes a minute to upload. I only have nine restaurants here for illustration, but you could have, you know, a thousand data points if you wanted. And so um, it's uh, now it's located uh, these nine restaurants. These are just restaurants that are near where I live and I, I've been to them and I like them. So that's why I <laughs> identified them. And you can see as you as you hover your mouse up and down, you can see these different points and they're all as a blue icon here. I could, if I wanted, uh, and I talked about this in the first uh, tutorial, um, change an individual point. Uh, I'm not gonna bother doing that now. You can go back and see um, how to do that in the first video. Um, but what I right now it's just listing the restaurants as a, as a list of you know uh, restaurants with no further information. If I want to go in and kind of change how these are grouped on the map, I can go into what's called individual styles, and I'd rather group the places by whether or not they're open at the moment. Um, and let's give them labels. Let's give them the restaurant name. I could give them the name or the URL or the phone number, but I'll give them the restaurant names. And by doing that, you can now see that um, of the list of nine restaurants, the green ones are the ones that are open. And yes, uh, a lot of, there's a lot of other labels here. Um, uh, so I can perhaps uh, tinker with the base map to see what kind of um, degree of detail I have on the base map, but I'm gonna leave that alone here. Um, I'm not gonna tinker with that too much. Uh, you can see that all of the green uh, points are restaurants that are open and then there's one restaurant that's recently closed it's not serving any more union loafers at least for the time being so that one is a value no not open yes for open and no for not open um, so again i've just done this with nine different restaurants i could add you know 900 restaurants here into my spreadsheet and then load them uh, and um, that information would come up. So, and then when I click on them, like if I click on the icon for Grace Meet in three, the other information I had in the spreadsheet is included. Uh, yes, it's open. Here's its phone number, and here is the web page so that I could go to the restaurant and place an order on, on online if I would like. So, um, so that's kind of nice. Um, okay, so that's uh, the first layer, but maybe in addition to um, restaurants, I would like to add some supermarkets. Uh, uh, so that's another layer, basically. So I want to add a new layer and I'm going to import supermarkets. And I've got a very tiny database of six supermarkets that I coded. So uh, COVID markets. And again, this is a .csv file. And again, it's going to want to know what um, values to plot for latitude and longitude and it's gonna to wanna to know how to display the points. And so now notice that the um, map will automatically zoom out a little bit too. It's gonna to zoom, zoom in or out such that all points from any layer that you've got are included in the view of the map. So it's got a broader view of St. Louis because some of these um, supermarkets I've identified here are further out like this one here, the Deerbergs is out in um, actually in Shrewsbury which is outside of the um, St. Louis city limits, technically speaking. Um, so again, I can um, group these according to different styles. Um, let's say I want to um, 
uh, change um, the color or the shape of the icon. I could do it individually, but of course, if you have 900 points, that's a bit cumbersome. So you can group them as a uniform style um, and then you can go back and you can edit their shape or color. Uh, I don't know, I'm just choosing kind of silly stuff here. Uh, that's not really a good icon for supermarkets, but you get my, you get my drift. Uh, yeah, here's a, here's a I don't know, slightly better <laughs> a martini glass. Um, so now um, all of the supermarkets on my um, map, uh, I'm not really saying whether or not they're open because pretty much all the supermarkets are still open as I do this recording, but it's kind of contrasting the points of where supermarkets are located in comparison to where my open and closed restaurants are located. Um, yeah, I think that's really all I want to um, show you. You can go in and um, tinker with this. Um, and also use the handout that I've prepared in Companion. I think the takeaway points are that um, you can add up to 10 different layers right now with Google Maps, um, and you can um, either modify the points based as a group, as a single group, if you choose uniform style under your style options, um, and you can also um, group them according to different variables that you've also included when you uh, created this data set in your spreadsheet. So for example, with restaurants, I could group them um, by whether or not they're currently open um, or whether they're currently closed. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing the screen at this point and stop this brief tutorial. And please feel free to, oh, I think one last thing I wanted to share with you, sorry, I'll go back, is, um, where is it? Um, our Iris uh, website. You can find recordings and information connected with different presentations here. So this was my uh, Google My Maps presentation from February, and today's presentation will show up uh, soon as well. And if you have any further questions, uh, I'm one of the um, co-directors of the iris site so you can um, get in touch with me you can send me an email um, and uh, i can answer any further questions that you have okay take care everybody